In the busy streets of our mama, a girl named Aboma hugged pure water and fruits. She was an orphan living with her stepmother, who treated her poorly. Every day, Aboma's stepmother would push her out of the house, warning her to sell everything before returning home. Aboma would leave early in the morning and come back late in the evening, tired and weak, with an empty basket. Her stepmother often denied her food, only to push her out again the next day to continue her hustle. The next day, Aboma continued her business with a smile on her face, but deep in her heart, she felt hurt and pain. Others are in school, but she's in the street just to make her stepmother happy. A young man named Ike Kama, who was a worthy and well-respected man in our, working for a popular company. He was the only son of his mother, who loved him dearly and wished for him to marry and give her grandchildren. Despite his mother's wish, Ike Kama loved her class women and had no plans of settling down. He enjoyed hanging around with classy girls, catching fun without any serious commitments. One day, as Ike Kama was coming back from work, he found himself stuck in traffic and feeling thirsty. Along the highway, he saw Aboma selling water and fruits. He bought some from her and asked her to slice the oranges for him. Aboma, being innocent and naive, agreed and started slicing the oranges. After enjoying the sweetness of the fruits, Ike Kama paid her and drove off, feeling satisfied. The next day, Ike Kama returned to the highway, searching for Aboma. When he found her, her oranges had already sold out, but he pleaded with her to supply him with some the next day. He gave her his home address, and Aboma, desperate to make sales to please her stepmother, went home to tell her stepmother about the order. Her stepmother packed some oranges for her and set her off with the address. Aboma arrived at Ike Kama's well-furnished house and knocked on the door. She was welcomed inside and immediately started slicing the oranges for him. Ike Kama was enjoying the fruits while asking Aboma questions. Ike Kama realized that Aboma was a naive. He decided to take advantage of her. He promised her many things, including a better life outside the village. Being naive and eager for a way out, Aboma believed him and accepted his advances. Ike Kama and Aboma ended up spending the night together. With Ike Kama promising to take care of her, the next day he drove her back to the village and gave her a small phone, asking her to call him if she needed anything. When Aboma's stepmother saw the luxury car and the gift Ike Kama brought for her, she was surprised and somehow happy. Aboma continued her hawking the next day, but after some time she started feeling very sick. She often couldn't go to the market, which made her stepmother very angry. One early morning, Aboma was sitting in the front of their hut, vomiting. Her stepmother noticed and took her to a nearby local hospital, where she was confirmed pregnant. Her stepmother was very angry and demanded to know who was responsible for the pregnancy. When Aboma mentioned Ike Kama's name, her stepmother's anger turned to happiness. She immediately called Ike Kama to break the news. Ike Kama was with his mother when the call came in, and he was very unhappy. However, his mother, who was eager to become a grandmother, convinced him to marry Aboma. Despite being unhappy, Ike Kama went to pay Aboma's bride price and took her home. Aboma moved into Ike Kama's mansion, and her stepmother was happy at the prospect of enjoying wealth. However, Ike Kama was far from happy. He provided for Aboma's niece, but never showed her any affection. He started bringing in his classy girlfriends in the house and spending time with them. Aboma felt lonely and unhappy in Ike Kama's mansion. She missed her old life despite his hardship and found it difficult to adjust her new surroundings. Ike Kama's coldness towards her made her feel even more isolated. One day, while Ike Kama was enjoying himself with one of his girlfriends in the biggest hotel in Awo, Aboma went into labor. She called Ike Kama, but he told her to go to the hospital and deliver the baby herself. Aboma quickly called her mother-in-law, who took her to the hospital. The doctor examined her and found out that she had placenta previa and couldn't deliver the baby naturally. Ike Kama's mother, who had experienced a similar issue while giving birth to Ike Kama, wasn't too worried about it. But she called Ike Kama to inform him of the situation on ground. Ike Kama was very angry and called Aboma names, accusing her of being weak and not woman enough. Despite his harsh ways, the doctor took Aboma to the operating room, 
where she delivered a healthy baby boy. Ikekama's mother was overjoyed at the birth of her grandson, but Ikekama remained indifferent. He was more interested in the high-class lifestyle than his new family. Aboma, on the other hand, was happy to have a baby, even if her husband showed no affection towards her. When Aboma was discharged from the hospital, she returned home to find Ikekama's side chick in the house. She felt hurt and confused, but Ikekama took the baby from her and handed it over to his girlfriend. He told Aboma that their business was over and that she didn't meet his standards as a wife. He gave Aboma conditions. If she's staying back, she's staying back as a house help and not a wife, and she won't have right over the baby that was born. Aboma was devastated by Ikekama's rejection. She struggled to adjust to the lifestyle without her baby and felt lost and alone. Despite the harsh treatment from Ikekama, she remained determined to survive and provide for herself. She moved us from Ikekama's mansion. Aboma found strength within herself and started to rebuild her life again. She returned to Hawking and was eager to earn a living and prove her worth. Aboma started a small fruit business with the money she saved while in the city. She worked hard and gradually expanded her business, getting respect from those around her. Despite her hardship, she remained kind and hardworking, winning the hearts of many. One fateful day, a wealthy businessman noticed Aboma's hard work and determination. He offered her a job at his company. Impressed by her dedication, Aboma accepted the offer and started working at the company, quickly proving herself to be a valuable employee. As Aboma's career progressed, she continued to work hard and raise above her past. She gained confidence and self-respect, no longer feeling like a victim of her circumstances. Her success and strength inspired many others in the village. Despite her busy work schedule, Aboma never forgot about her son. She longed to be reunited with him and worked tirelessly to earn enough money to fight for his custody. Her love for her child gave her the strength to keep going, no matter how tough things got. Aboma decided to take legal action to gain custody of her son. With the support of her friends and her boss, she hired a lawyer and prepared for the battle ahead. She was ready to bring her son back and provide him with a better life. The courtroom battle was tough and emotional, but Aboma remained strong. She presented her case with dignity and honesty, winning the sympathy and support of the judge. Her courage and strength impressed everyone in the courtroom. After a long and difficult battle, Aboma finally won custody of her son. She was overjoyed and grateful for the support she has received from her friends and her boss. She celebrated her victory. Aboma was finally reunited with her son. She showered him with love and care, determined to provide for him with the best life. Her journey had been tough, but she had risen above her circumstances and found happiness and victory. Aboma's life continued to improve and she became a respected and successful businesswoman. She remained humble and kind, always ready to help those in need. Her story inspired many, proving that with hard work and determination, one can overcome any obstacles and find happiness.